So hello again, everyone. I introduced myself last week on Friday on the day zero, but quickly, a very quick introduction of me. I'm Jaime. I've been working the Android team for two years and a bit now. You might know me from the community. I'm very active there, trying always to bridge the development of the application with uh, implementations and users. So I think during this week, we were going to see each other quite a lot. I will not spend much time on the introduction now because I think uh, we're a bit <laughs> delayed. But we we will discuss a bit more in the in the next session. Uh, someone is not muted. I'm sorry. I well, I cannot mute it. So please mute yourself if you don't mind. Because uh, yeah. so what are we gonna do in this session? We're gonna present the metadata that you're gonna be using for your exercises during the whole week. And this is what's going to happen. It's going to be 20 minutes. I'm going to try to go a bit fast. Um, please, if you have questions, put them in the chat or in the Slack. It's better than the chat because they will be staying for later on. And what we're trying to present is the COVID-19 digital package from the DHIS2 team. And for you to understand what we'll be using and what are the differences and what we have prepared for you in the server that we set it up. So I think COVID-19 unfortunately does not need any presentation. We are all aware of what is this. Basically it's a contagious disease. It broke up two years ago now. It has impacted pretty much the whole world. And last year, well, um, I put some dates, uh, data here that uh, from when I did the presentation 10 days ago, there are many, many cases. But what I wanted you to know is that from the DHIS2, there are two packages that have been released in order to help tracking on both the surveillance and the vaccination. And this is what I put here. These packages are aligned with the WHO techniques, technical guidance. And we have two packages, the one on the left, which is called for surveillance that is being used now in 42 countries and 13 in development and the vaccination delivery toolkit. It's in 40 countries already and three under development. We are gonna be focusing on the one on the left because it contains all the useful things that we want to show you during this academy, meaning that it has tracker, it has aggregate, etc. And during this presentation, that's what I'm gonna to try to explain. I'm gonna go through the model that the WHO prepared and how it was adapted for the DHIS2. So, in the agenda, you should, I, I think you all have access to the agenda, the public agenda that is listed here. Uh, you will find some documents, if not in this presentation, that you can also download. I'm gonna be referring the whole time to these documents that are listed here. And basically you will have all the information that I'm gonna be using. And I think it's a good idea that you quickly scan these documents. Of course, you don't need to learn what's being said there, but you will see that what I'm talking about is exactly what it's uh, explained here. Uh, the two ones are the ones that we we'll mainly use. And I also added a third document here which you should be able to access and allows you to see what we have called the metadata navigation file, which basically simplifies a lot uh, what we will be discussing this week. If you want, you can download it, you can print it, and in case you make modifications, you can put them there, but it's just a support document. So getting into um the packets actually so as i told you we have these two basic uh, kits the surveillance and the vaccination i will talk about the surveillance and the surveillance is being broken up in these different packages let's say or programs they're not really programs because someone is aggregate so this is what it was presented and what we use in the hs2 and the one the boxes below are the ones that are following the, the who uh, guidance. And if we see, if we map this to a DHIS2 data model, we can say that the aggregate surveillance, it's actually for aggregate data, the outbreak line list is for events, and the last three ones are for tracker. So already we can see that what we know about DHIS2, we're already trying to put the knowledge we have and putting these boxes or where they correspond. 
We are going to be mainly using the last program, as you can see here, which is the main program that we'll use during the training. And the contact tracing and the aggregate are support programs that we will use in some specific um, sessions. Because, for example, we cannot include aggregate in the last one. So for the session of aggregate that Marta will be giving, I think, on Thursday or Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, we will be using this support package. And for the um, relations, etc., we'll be using the contact tracing. Okay. Uh, here you have a note that says both programs have been slightly adapted. So at one point you might find that the program on the um, server that we will give you later on, it does not correspond 100%. For example, we have added some exactly one actually program rule variable. But basically, we are really, really matching what is from the from the official guidance with this adaptation for the train. I think that this does not well, require much more introduction, but just for you to know that we're explaining uh, the base surveillance and rolling like suspected cases. Then we have the registration follows up and the aggregate. If we have something from the from the packages team, I think they would explain this much better and more in detail. But just for you to know that for COVID, uh, there are different ways of assessing or evaluating the impact on the country or wherever we are we are implementing this. And basically, it goes from uh, tracking in general terms to go in much more in detail and basically like this. So if we would like to know a very quick overview of what's going on in the country, probably we will have the aggregate surveillance because we don't have the tools yet to go deeply. Then we could go to the events and the last instance is going to the tracker. It's for you to know, um, maybe I, well, I said this at the beginning, there are 42 countries that are using this. Some of them, they have adapted this model. They have added new stuff that was required by their Ministry of Health. Some other countries are using it to track people when they cross the borders, to print the um, digital, how is it called, the COVID uh, certificate, COVID passport, I don't know how you call it, it depends on the country. So just for you to know that this is something that is being used. And well, we hope that during the training, you will see the capabilities of VHS2 and on top of that, how you could be using the Android uh, application for this. If I go back now, I'm going to go back, I'm going to center the next set of slides in the case-based surveillance plus laboratory. If we take this model that is being presented by the WHO, you have it here again, the link that you could find. So to go much more in detail into this. But basically what's happened is that this is what, uh, what are the steps that later on we will map to the DHIS2 model. So very quickly, I will go through it, but uh, patient attends the facility. So we have a patient. We can already think that we're talking about patients. So we're not talking about aggregate specifically. We're not talking about events. We're going to be talking about tracking. So this is a tracker program. So this, this person, this patient will go to the hospital. It will be screened. And then it will be decided to go to hospitalization or to not be hospitalized. And then things will be performed. So probably we will be doing a PCR test or our antigens test, et cetera. So we are having some lab requests. Then we have some results. And according with these results, I don't know if you see my mouse. I'm moving the mouse. I hope you can see it because I'm trying to follow. But if not... Uh... Yes, yes, your mouse. Ah, okay, okay. And then... Um... The follow-up is conducted and we can see what happened with this person. Uh, we have three different outcomes, let's say, and then we can also perform more things. So basically, this is what we could map to something like this. So if we go to, and I think this uh, maybe some exercise that some of you have to had done in the past. Basically, you have a model and you adapt it to, to DHS2. So here we have the first stage. I will see afterwards, I will show you afterwards how many stages we have. But basically we have the first one, which is the enrollment. And in the enrollment, if we will be here, the patient is screened and identify a suspected COVID-19 case. So we see we're gonna be gathering this information. 
So these are the attributes that we have assigned to the patient that again, some countries might need to adapt to their specific uh, requirements by the Ministry of Health. And then we will um, enroll this patient and we will have another stage, which is called the stage one, clinical examination exposure. Here, what we're gonna be doing, it's um, recording all the symptoms, etc. Again, this is following pre WHO. Uh, we have a stage two lab request, which important to know is repeatable, the lab results repeatable, and the health outcome. It could be now in person training and not online. I will ask you why do you think these ones are repeatable? So I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds for you to think. Why do you think that the stage two and a stage three could be repeatable? You don't need to answer. I mean, if you want to put it in the chat, I will not see it, but just for you to think, why do you think that this, for example, the stages could be repeatable? Sorry? I was, I was saying that um, for me, in, I like to give trainings in a different way when, I am, um, when I'm in you person. Have a, that's cool. You have an answer, Jaime. Ah, okay, I cannot see it, eh? So... Saying you can be tested more than once yeah, or exactly. for second test. So yes, that's correct. Exactly, that's it. So thank you, I don't know who did that, but thank you very much for the participation. Yes, it was, um, <laughs> it was Johan Smith, Pacific Pashat, Atege Kimana, I don't know which name to pick. And then Deepika Sign, also lab tests can be done multiple times. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. Thank you. So, yeah, thanks. So basically now going to this, if we map, so all these things that I have been presented actually can be modelized, I would call it, into this. I'm a very visual person and I think this explains pretty well the package. So if you see here, COVID based surveillance, we have enrollment, we have the stages. I've tried to make it graphical so you see that these two and three are repeatable because of, as you said, we might request several several different tests. And then we have the outcome. And I've also put here, you can see a dotted line from contacts because, you know, in DHIS2, in the programs, we can have relationships. So we could have patients. Imagine um, a person comes, he gets tested, and then we also have his or her partner they come, we can also register and we could link the cases, okay? We will see this in the, in the next sessions. So I try to, oh, sorry. I try to put it with different colors, but basically this one box out is what, as you can see here, the legend, that's a program. Then we have different program stages and then we have sections in the program stages. Uh, if this sounds a bit uh, complicated for you, don't worry. I think at one point when you log into the system, if you have the file that I gave you as a metadata, metadata navigation file or this presentation, you will see that what I'm talking about, it really corresponds to this. And I'm gonna just leave you this here, which is more resources. Um, this is the documents I've linked before. And also just for you to know that there is a YouTube channel or a playlist actually from the DHIS2. Uh, University of Oslo, where you can see all these uh, packages much uh, more explaining or more in deeply, in depth. Sorry, um, I think that's going to be my presentation for now. I went a bit quick, but my last slide is this one, which, as you know, we are tracking the attendance with the word of the day. I know someone during the break already asked, "Hey, what is the word of the day?" So. This is the word of the day. At one point, when you log it into the platform, the learning platform, you will need to provide a word to mark the attendance. So this is the word you need to put today, which is APK. So you put this and your attendance gets marked as checked. And at the end of the academy, a 10% of your total score goes because of the points. I know I went a bit fast, but the thing is that I, I prefer to focus on the next sessions. And like this, we try to catch up with the schedule. That's very good, Jaime. <laughs> yeah. Um, so don't worry if this sounded, I mean, we, you know, we expect you to have some knowledge on, on the HSU, specifically on Tracker. If you think this was a bit like complex, don't worry. In the next two sessions, which is like uh, two hours, 
We are going to be going through this. We're going to set up your uh, program, your application. You will get access to the server, etc. So thank you very much. And again, thanks for those who are participating a bit. See you. Jaime, what time do we come back, sorry? Yeah, so now uh, as we managed to catch up, let's do at 11. Okay, so we have like a 12 minutes break. Okay. The next sessions are gonna be exercises. So probably we will require you to have your mm -hmm. phone already ready. So if you have it next to you, have it. If you don't have it, sorry, have it. Uh, bring your charger. Um, that's it. I don't know if you anyone is working in groups that could. I know in the past we were doing this when we do in line training. If you are working in groups, it's okay. Maybe we will see how how you can submit the exercises. But uh, okay, I'm I'm reading the chat now. Just specific. Okay, so that's it. Let's see you guys in and girls in twelve minutes. Thank you. The word of the day is APK. They are asking for the word. Ah, sorry, I don't. We can repeat it. I thought I was APK. still sharing. Yeah. Okay, and then on day zero, yes, there was attendance taken, but that was that will not come. That will not count for your total attendance. Yes. So don't worry about that. So I'm gonna make a remark, and then I will stop the the recording. Some of you are already asking questions here that might, for example, this is okay. So I think that's taken from day zero. We will answer them, but again, let me remind you that it's better if you could ask these kind of questions on the Slack, because the moment we close this or those who are following the recordings, because they are not following online, but they are going later on, cannot see these questions. So I will always try to read them but it's more, I think it's more useful if you put them as Slack. Abdel, you're asking some questions. Sometimes there are programs where events can be repeated indefinitely. Does the tracker support this kind of program? Example, addiction program? Yes, as far as I know, there's no um, limitation as long as your server allows you, in the sense, sorry. So if you have memory in the server, there's no limit as far as I know that uh, you have um, a specific number of, e of stages. So I would say, yes, you can have as many as you want. I think, yeah. I'm gonna stop the recording. I'm gonna be here. I will might, I might go to get some water. If you ask questions, please do it in Slack because this again is not gonna be recorded. Thank you. <laughs>